So what's going wrong at Manchester United? Obviously, enormous football club, but they are, let's say, languishing in sixth place. And I'll be honest, I think they're very fortunate to be in sixth place. In two words, because I know what the words are, what is wrong at Man United right now? No, mate. I'm going to give some respect, Eric Ten Hag. That's three words. <laughs> I'll sit with two, Ten Hag. <laughs> yes, yeah. TH. TH. Yes, I would say Ten Hag as well. So let's get into the weeds with this and, the, and try and figure out what's, what's wrong and if it's fair for us to say that the problem is Eric Ten Hag. First of all, in terms of open play XG created, they are only 11th highest. So that's obviously with the ball. And in terms of non-penalty XG, broadly speaking, they are 16th. 16th in the league but they are currently somehow sixth in the league. Someone explain that to me. Mark, our producer, I need an explanation from you. He just, he just went like that. That's what he's got. Okay. Now, with, <laughs> without the ball, in terms of shots against any opponent in the Premier League this year, they are the third worst. By quite some way, West Ham are fourth bottom, Luton's uh, second bottom of that, and Sheffield United are the worst when it comes to that. So, let's start off with in possession. What, when you watch Man United is the biggest problem with the ball. They don't move the ball through the f- the through the through the uh, phases of the pitch. Phases? That's not a word about Through the lines? Yeah, through the lines, through the thirds. Yeah. Um, and that's mainly because they don't have a style. Uh, so essentially, a lot of the talk has been when Leech, Leecher, Lissandra Maltes is fit, we have a style. I don't believe the top managers or top teams in the world rely on one player to provide them with their style. Um, I think then also the best teams in the world at the moment squeeze the pitch. Manchester United in possession don't squeeze the pitch. Mm-hmm. So if you get the ball, if you get the ball wide and United have it wide and it, it gets crossed in, it's cleared inside the box by a defender. The other team has a transition because United don't step up essentially. So that's part of the problem in possession. Also against Liverpool, I'm looking at their midfielders, Kobe Mainu and Casemiro, um, and that's just looking at the most recent game. They don't want the ball um, because they don't believe that they that, one. They don't believe that they can do anything with it. But two, the options off the ball are terrible. No, no one else wants the ball. So that's that in a roundabout way. In a nutshell, um, they just don't have a structure to play football. And it's it's interesting because obviously managers will impart instructions onto teams and individuals. It seems like all the Manchester United players have individual instructions that they are following, but there is no cohesive team structure that they I don't understand how they play I don't understand the style of football that they're going for even when they play well and even when Manchester United win you're kind of looking at the game and you're thinking well I don't really know how that happened I know that you scored more than the opposition but how it didn't see it there's no there's no cohesive unit at all when I, for, for me the thing that it's got to be infuriating if I'm not a man United fan but if it, I was is it's they're at there's two strategies at place at times and they're at odds with each other. Mm. By Leverkusen, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham. They all have a very clear understanding of what they are trying to do. And come back to your point, for me, in possession, it feels fearful a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And I think there's moments where, especially in the build-up phase, you look to... I'm watching football these days, and, and often the game's kind of breathing sometimes, where you're kind of... Players are in the build-up phase are going... Right, we, we've got it here because we want to bring some players over here to create that space. And the opposition, a lot of the time, or some at different moments, again, they will either look to press. Let's think Arsenal against Man City the other week. They will look to, at the highest, at the high up the pitch. They will look to get at the opposition. But once that moment's kind of gone and they've moved up the pitch, they are then compact. So you have an option either to all go or, or all go back. What is blowing my mind with Man United, who are outrageously lucky in that game against Liverpool is that there's two things here first of all in terms of the profiles of players and you look at those two teams you've got Delo, who's fine wan who's fine but if you want to go man for man marking which is what the sort of front players of Man United do you all have to go mm. everyone has to squeeze up the pitch yeah. and I know people go well we've got Maguire we can't do that okay then don't get dragged around. There was a moment where Connor Bradley stepped into midfield and Rashford followed him. And then Kwanzaa went over to the right-hand side. And obviously, there's no one There's no one on that right-hand side because Bruno Fernandes is in the middle of the pitch as well. So, And then he's got so much space to, to, to walk up the pitch. And Casemiro is getting a lot of heat right now. Kobe Mainu is getting a lot of plaudits right now, but he is getting bypassed. That whole midfield is getting utterly bypassed. And there's a 40-metre gap between the front line and the defence. 
And so Maguire might be a problem with that. But if that is the case, look at Arsenal. Look how compact they are when they haven't got the ball so that they don't make it easy for the opposition. That is why there are so many shots. And, and I think in terms of a, a game, game state, momentum as well, you have to, you have, to have a plan on, on both sides of it. And there isn't a plan with, it, mm. with either side of it. Yeah. It's like, can you get the ball to Bruno Fernandes or can you break quickly? I saw comments from Ten Hag saying, saying we know our plan. I don't know why everyone's going on about this. I'll tell you what, I cannot see it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's so There's odd. also a few other issues, like Manchester United's two most effective attacking players are both suited to playing transitional football, Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford. And so when a game's tight and congested, Bruno Fernandes wants to shoot from everywhere and Rashford doesn't want to take his fullback on. Mm. And so your two best attacking players are players that don't suit this style that you're trying to implement. Neither of your fullbacks for the longest time are the type of fullbacks that want to be front-footed. You're asking wan to track his winger into a central area he doesn't want to do that. And you can almost see for 10, 12 minutes in the game against Liverpool, which is the most recent example, he did it. And then eventually he realised, I don't really want to be doing this because it's bait, like it's sort of baiting me out and there's space everywhere. That comes down to like the manager not understanding his individuals very well. Mm. If you've got Wan-Bissaka, who's a one-on-one -on -one defender, and you're asking him to chase his winger all over the pitch, and he's going, I don't really want to do that. And you're going, but you'll be fine doing it. And week after week, there's moments when he's switching off and the opposition scoring from those positions and you're not learning from that, that's on the, on the gaffer. You also brought in a goalkeeper who wants to play out from the back and you play long. <laughs> so there's like, there, not, not many things make sense. And uh, to try and be fair with this, uh, is, is one big part of this the squad building? You know, I've seen a lot of Man United fans who are going, look, they need to kind of make a decision here with Ten Hag or sort of back him or don't. But they're, they're okay with the club backing him because they still think he's he's a good coach um but the squad building the squad building should um allow safeguarding for injuries but no one wants to play wan left back he doesn't want to play there himself mm. uh, but when shaw's out and malassia's out and, and lindelof's out although we don't want to play him there amrabat's played there at times like the the profiles within the squad that's a problem as well isn't it because they've gone through so many managers yeah but but i think that i think the strange thing about that is almost everyone that Manchester United have bought, particularly under Ten Hag era, but even since Fergie, every single one that they've bought, everyone has thought, oh, that's a good signing. Yeah. Whether it's Falcao, whether it's Ibrahimovic, whether it's Anthony, whether it's Jadon Sancho. Jadon Sancho. Yeah. And they've all failed. They've all got worse. And particularly under Ten Hag, none of these players have improved whatsoever. Mm. I mean, we were talking about Casemiro yesterday. I, I can't believe that performance that he put in. I think it's quite. I think he's all I think, alone. No, but I think I think it's just. I think it's embarrassing, and I don't. I'm not talking about being out of position. The lack of chasing and the lack of effort you're putting in. And there was a clip the other day when Man United lost to Chelsea, when they lost four three to Chelsea, and there's a clip of Marcus Rashford pressing on, on the 85th minute. Uh, he's not pressing. Mm. He's just very very slowly jogging alongside his players, mm. and that also. That, you know, you have to blame the players for that, of course. But you also have to think that the book stops with the manager there. You should be inspiring your players to sprint after every single ball. You're 3-2 up. It's the 85th minute. You're away at Stamford Bridge. Everyone should be sprinting after the ball. Everyone should be putting their heart on the line for the club and for the manager. And they're not doing that. And I, I, there are definitely issues behind the scenes. But for sure, Ten Hag is not the man to take them to that next the level. Inju injury management hasn't been great either. Lissandro Martin has been rushed back multiple times. Luke Shaw was rushed back. There is a, a sense of like, if, if you're getting this many injuries on repeat for similar areas, for similar players, you're not doing something well in training. Mm -hmm. That's been spoken about a lot by guys who follow Manchester United much closer than I do on social media. And they've all said there's definitely an issue in training because players are dropping like flies mm -hmm. constantly. So I look at all these things and I go, yes, the squad build has not been great, but he still does have a lot of very good footballers. And if I, if I strip it back and go, okay, what has he done well? The list is this big. And when I look at what's he done badly, the list is humongous. Yeah. You, there's a great clip from Tim Cahill talking about Arsenal a few years ago. And they've beaten they've beaten Man United, and and he's he's been chastised a little bit by Roy Keane. But he's saying the thing with Arsenal is they know why they're losing. Mm. They're learning from those, and and look where they are now. Knowledge is power, and like mm -hmm. when it comes to Rashford with the pressing, again, if the re if they were a compact two sets of four and and you're in front two again, like, like Arsenal are often out of possession, you wouldn't be having a go at Rashford for pressing because he's part of a unit. Yeah. And football is played that way now. You are an, a whole entity now. 
there's so much there for you. And so both with the ball, you need to know where your guys are, and then it needs to be a process to get you up the pitch. And without the ball, there needs to be a process so that the ball is in front of you, because if the ball's in front of you, they haven't scored yet. And on both, it's just it's just not good enough. No. And it's and you can't see what they're trying to do. Mm. And and that is that is glaringly what, obvious. What? Sorry. So the, the huge issue is they win games. That's exactly <laughs> what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. What you mentioned there about not learning from your mistakes. They will go on a really poor run and then they'll win a game that you don't expect them to win. Yeah. Or they'll draw against Liverpool and they're massive, massive underdogs. Well, poor Brentford fans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two games, the, the McTominay double at home and then in the second one. Exactly. So it's like they're always just getting off by the skin of their teeth because they have players that yeah. are so good. They have a billion pound squad. Of course, they have players that are so good. But there is no learning because they're always, always papering over the cracks. Final question here. Often, uh, I like to say that, you know, often you're sort of free, you can be three players away from being a really good team. Are Man United three players away from being a good team? And if you were going to give Ten Hag that chance to have those three players, would you would you allow for it? No. Does he have to go for you? Yeah, because his recruitment's been poor. So I wouldn't give him more money to recruit poorly again. And also the players. But he's, he's not going to make those decisions this summer, is he? Yeah, but he's he's also anyone he's been linked to are also players he shouldn't be linked to as well. Right. Uh, and so I look at that and I go, and also his. His, the way he's dealt with this squad I don't think has been good enough yeah. so in my opinion I think you get a new manager and just restart from top to bottom then go and make three more mistakes okay, okay. Uh, no I agree I think he's a I think he's a manager who hasn't quite understand what his profile is yet he's not good at man management he's not good in big games he's not got a style and I think if you're if you're content with being in six which Manchester United fans clearly aren't you can't have Ten Hag there <laughs>